Hello again, everybody, and welcome to case study number 14. This is a patient coming in with tremor, specifically an adult slash older adult. If you haven't had the chance yet, please consider subscribing to my Patreon. Uh, you can get there by clicking the link in the description of the video, which apparently has not been working for everyone, or you can do the fail-safe way of clicking on the I button in the upper right-hand corner. I really appreciate all the contributions I can get, and I thank all of you uh, who have already uh, signed up to donate. Uh, so in advance, thank you for your consideration. All right, we got a pretty long vignette here. We got a 45-year-old white guy coming into the clinic with his wife for a seven-month history of tremor. The patient says that it began in his right thumb, but it's now involving the entire right hand. He says that He's depressed about it because it's making it difficult for him to paint, which is one of his favorite hobbies. It's also difficult for him to button his shirt when he gets dressed. The tremor is worse when he is doing fine motor activities and when he's watching TV or laying down to sleep. It's better when he's playing tennis or jogging. He works as a college football coach and is sexually monogamous with his wife. He denies drinking tobacco and recreational drug use and is adamant that he lives a very healthy lifestyle. Family history includes hyperthyroidism and his mother, who has passed away. He's got a past medical history of bipolar 2 disorder, which has been well-maintained on lithium for the last 25 years. His medication include lithium, sildenafil, which is Viagra, and a multivitamin. Vitals are within normal limits. All right, so we're going to move on to the physical exam. And his physical exam uh, is normal all the way down to the extremities and spine. What do we see? We see a resting tremor in the right hand, no joint deformities or pain to palpation, full range of motion, peripheral pulses are normal, no spinal tenderness. Uh, his neuro and psych exam show normal mental status, normal cranial nerve exam. There's rigidity on passive movement of the wrist. A progressive delay in speed during toe tapping and alternating pronation supination of the hand. His voice is normal in volume and quality, and there's no slurring. So what is our differential? So we want to include the possibility of lithium toxicity. Lithium can cause tremor if your levels get too high, and we know he's on lithium. There's a possibility of Parkinson's disease, given the fact that he's having tremor. He's a little bit kind of getting up there middle age, so that is something that could happen at that age. Essential tremor. We'll see that his tremor doesn't really follow that pattern, but it's super, super common, so you've got to consider that. Wilson disease can cause tremor, and then uh, there's the possibility of hyperthyroidism can cause a tremor as well. There are other causes that are less common. We'll get into what some of those are in a little bit. So what are we going to do for workup? So based on your differential. We're going to get a lithium level because we think there's a remote possibility that he's got Wilson's. We're going to get ceruloplasmin and liver function tests. And to rule out hyperthyroidism, we'll get a TSH. What do we find? Everything is normal. So he's in the therapeutic range for his lithium. Ceruloplasmin and liver function tests were normal and his TSH was normal. So um, we're going to make the diagnosis of Parkinson's disease here, and at least this is a tentative diagnosis. So um, you typically make this diagnosis based on the constellation of symptoms and the fact that you're really ruling out some of the more common causes. So what we're going to do is we're going to start him kind of on a trial of levodopa, carbidopa, and see if he responds to that. We want to reassure and counsel the patient, and in the meantime, we're going to refer him to neurology. They're going to be the ones that manage this, and he's going to follow up with them. We also could refer him to physical therapy and occupational therapy because he's having some difficulty with activities of daily life like dressing himself. Uh, you should consider alternative diagnoses if the response to trial of levodopa carbidopa is inadequate. Now, Parkinson's disease, as you may know, is a progressive neurologic disorder characterized by bradykinesia with a resting tremor and or rigidity. 
It almost always starts unilaterally. So what do we mean by bradykinesia? We mean a slowness of voluntary motion. So that was, uh, for instance, that toe tapping activity or that alternating pronation and supination. Watch for that to start out kind of normal and fast and then gradually slow down. That's a sign of bradykinesia. They can also have delay of initiating movements and a freezing of gait as you kind of progress in the disease. The resting tremor is classic, um, so this gets worse with time, like everything else. It is asymmetrical. That is super, super important. Um, and then their tremor is often described as pill rolling in nature. Rigidity is another one. Classically, this is the cogwheel rigidity. You can also appreciate this by resistance to passive motion at, at the joint. Um, so uh, look for that. Other manifestations include the gait abnormalities, which is classically described as a shuffling gait, uh, hy hypophonia, quiet voice, mask faces. Some of this shows up a little bit later in the course of the disease. There are no specific diagnostic tests available, so you really just have to rule out all the other possibilities. The best initial management is a trial of levodopa carbidopa, along with that referral to neurology. There are some non-motor symptoms that can show up. Uh, typically, um, these are going to be neuropsychiatric symptoms, depression, anxiety, autonomic dysfunction, and sometimes sleep disorders can precede the development of motor symptoms, but those are so nonspecific that a lot of times the diagnosis of Parkinson's flies under the radar until they have those movement symptoms. Now, if you do treat them with levodopa, carbidopa, remember that psychosis is a possibility. Um, it comes up in almost half of patients. Uh, so you would manage this with a drug called pimavanserin. Um, that's worth knowing. Some common differentials, we consider lithium toxicity. Usually this shows up with uh, polyuria, polydipsia can get confused with diabetes. Uh, essential tremor, this happens in a lot of people. It's super, super common. I have it. Uh, so this is a symmetrical tremor, whereas Parkinson's can first show up as asymmetrical. Often it starts in younger adulthood. Characteristically, it's suppressed by alcohol, and of course they'll have no rigidity or bradykinesia. This is also kind of progressive too. Wilson's disease, usually a younger patient, really consider it in somebody under 40. This patient was kind of at that cusp. Um, they'll have elevated transaminases. The sine qua non is going to be that ceruloplasmin. Uh, psychiatric features are common with this, and they classically have those Kaiser Fleischer rings. Hyperthyroidism, you probably know what that is, um, but look for more symptoms other than just a tremor. Some other possibilities include multiple system atrophy, uh, that's also known as Scheidrager syndrome, progressive supranuclear palsy. You'll see a lot of ocular symptoms in that. They'll have difficulty uh, moving their eyes up and down. Lewy body dementia, again, dementia, look for symptoms like that. Vascular Parkinsonism is usually a result of a stroke. Brain tumor, NPH, remember NPH, wet, wacky, wobbly, uh, will give you gait disturbances. Um, so these are things to consider. You really consider these things if you start the patient on levodopa carbidopa and they don't respond. This is an algorithm from the AAFP. You can screenshot this, print it out if you want. So to recap, Parkinson's is a progressive neurologic disorder characterized by bradykinesia with resting tremor and or rigidity. It's diagnosed after excluding other common potential causes, including lithium toxicity, um, pseudo-Parkinsonism, and essential tremor. If you've got a young patient with a tremor, particularly uh, a, an intention tremor, think uh, of essential tremor first, and you would start them on propranolol and see if it gets better. The initial management is a trial of levodopa carbidopa and neurology referral. If there is improvement, that really supports the diagnosis. If there's no improvement, then you'd move on to consider alternative causes. Remember that 40% of patients that are started on levodopa carbidopa will develop psychosis, and you would manage this uh, with Pima Vanserin.